Colleagues, let's try the following um, in the few minutes which we have for discussion. Let's try to connect dots at this point. Um, there were a few people which I had cut off uh, from uh, a previous round of discussion. Uh, I uh, uh, will give them also the floor in this round. Um, I would prefer that we um, make succinct and brief points. Um, uh, Marcus Gabriel um, was uh, a leftover, Stefano, uh, Nobu Musa, and uh, so please, your statements or questions should be more half a minute than a minute, uh, Marcus. Well, yeah, thanks. Then I'll uh, be brief. I had a question to uh, Christoph uh, Pilo, but it, so, to some extent, uh, could also in part be answered by Margaret uh, Archer. Um, well, you mentioned Plato and Aristotle and ethics. As a matter of fact, uh, remarkably, one of the results of ethics has been that ethics is not about the predictability of behavior. So that's <clears throat> uh, it's precisely the opposite. So um, ethics is the study of what we ought to do. And what humans do is not identical with what we ought to do. This is why all of ethics presupposes free will and unpredictability. That's its essence. For this reason, this ethics of our AI discourse, as it's, you know, if it's a regulatory discourse, is utterly misguided and not about ethics. OK. Um, yeah. let, no, let's, let's keep connecting dots. I put you on the list. Uh, um, uh, Stefano? Yes, I had also a comment for Christophe. And uh, uh, do you think that we might eventually never have self-driving cars in cities? Uh, yeah, we that we eventually might not have never self-driving cars in cities because of the complexity of an environment, uh, adversarial attacks, etc. Okay, no Musa. Thank you. Uh, I also have a, a question uh, each to uh, the Christopher and the Maramacho. Um, so on the predictability of the next move of the human by the AI, uh, what would be the pre practical level of the uh, practical level of predictability to employ in actually into the, the automobiles? And then the question to uh, Maramacho, um, you touched upon the uh, uh, what's that, uh, you know, legal prohibition against the discrimination. I think it's uh, appropriate and ethical. But then uh, the question is, if we try to develop the, uh, the machine learning as precise as possible, then based upon the, the data of the behavior of people, then uh, the, no, the research says that the, the, the AI also tend to be discriminatory. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to what extent can we artificially uh, regulate such a disc discriminatory conclusion uh, which is uh, against uh, the sort of uh, the concept of uh, uh, machine learning. Okay, Wolf. Well, there's a comment to Margaret. Um, I couldn't agree more with your analysis of qualia, consciousness, all those phenomena. Also, the fact <clears throat> that you emphasize the relational um, aspect as the basis for emergent properties that you need for social realities and also for uh, friendship. I was less clear about the robot you were talking about. Was this a scientific uh, science fiction construct? Just a thought model? If they would, they could become. If this is so, I go entirely with you. Uh, OK, uh, Amy. Um, I have points for both Pierre and for Margaret. Um, for Pierre, I was surprised actually at your conclusion that you wanted to move forward with AI and robotics in the classroom because you also did a nice job of pointing out the vulnerability of this demographic and the risks. So I would be curious to learn more about the reasoning behind why we should do it when for me it felt like you were going in a different direction. And also then when uh, Stanislas pointed out that there is no learning when it's just the screen, wouldn't this be, isn't this enough evidence to say that we should be 
more careful with children because they're so vulnerable. And then um, for Margaret, two, two things. The first was this relational or the dyadic that you were pointing out. Love it. I'm a huge fan of that approach. Um, Mark Kugelberg is a name that you might want to look into as someone who is also approaching this relational um, approach. And then you mentioned the European Commission putting forward uh, an initiative for electronic personality or electronic personhood. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the commission, but I know that in 2017, the European Parliament um, did put forward a motion for a resolution for electronic personality, which has been dropped. The, the commission didn't want to take this up, and there was a lot of pushback. So I'm not sure if that's the one that you were making reference to, or if there is another one, then I'd be curious to know about the, this other one. Okay. In closing, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Christoph, then Pierre, and then Margaret to comment or respond. Uh, Christoph? So uh, let me start with a question about uh, ethics. Uh, I'm definitely uh, not uh, uh, with you here, but uh, it might take too long, so perhaps we should part, use part of the break. But uh, if, you, if you consider the word, the, the original meaning of, uh, of ethos, which is what usually is being done, so it's, it's geared toward action, and so is uh, Aristoteles Nicomachische Ethik as well. It's, uh, how, uh, it's a sort of guidance, providing guidance to lead a good life, which is geared again towards action. So I, I think that uh, my interpretation is, is fairly consistent, but we can go into details later. And uh, regarding, um, regarding your question about uh, uh, automated driving in cities, there will be, uh, I'm very sure, there will be fully automated driving in cities. There's a huge level of complexity we have to deal with, so it will be reduced speed, of course, but we have very promising examples of how this is, can be achieved, but uh, there is, uh, there, uh, it's not only the technical complexity, but the legal framework as well, which has to be put in place, but I'm very optimistic about that. However, I can't give you a precise year, but I think it, it will be in the next decade. But let me take that as an opportunity to just, uh, uh, Margaret, reach out to you. I, I would like to, have a, to pose the fundamental question, whether it's not good enough to have AI and robots just as tools. The, the notion of friendship, is it really necessary to extend that on tools? Because I feel robotics and AI in certain areas is overrated right, right now. So there, is, there are much more expectations about the level of intelligence we already have achieved. So it's more the intelligence which is in the eye of the beholder than implemented on the actual machines. So this kind of intelligence which we're required to, to establish meaningful friendships or so, I think this is way, way in the future. Well, interesting. We really love this self-driving car as much as we loved our old Volkswagen Beetle. I don't know. <laughs> Pierre. Pierre yes, uh, if I properly understand your surprise, uh, uh, I agree with you that I try to uh, make a difference between, given the urgency of education issues, to make a difference between the humanoid uh, version of a teacher, uh, humanoid teach, robot teacher will, in my opinion, never replace a, a human teacher as uh, sexual robots will never replace love between a man and a woman. But on the other hand, the pressing issue of education at the global scale is such that we have to count on every possible aid to teachers that I'm sure AI can provide. I mean, this has to be explored much further than it is today. Margaret? Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike? Well, working backwards, um, the last question was, bit, was an intriguing one, a good one. Um, why shouldn't we just have functional, I don't mean functionalist, that's dead and gone. Why shouldn't we have 
purely functional relationships of the kind that we have with ordinary robotics. You know, me and my mowing machine. Why do we need more than this? Because, uh, useful as that is, and robotics always will be useful, um, but they are for the, you know, mass production of burgers, uh, where you don't expect an improvement in the burger, you expect steady stream of burgers, and the whole question about the relationship is one of machine maintenance. It's just like oiling your uh, glass mower. Um, now, I think you can get an awful lot more, and this is where emergence and emergent properties come in, if instead of just having an instrumental relationship which is fundamentally based on exchange, no, um, Stefano isn't back with us, um, if you have a friendship relationship, uh, well, let me put it as a question. What are pubs for? You may not be great f frequenters of pubs. Substitute cafes if you, you want to, but I think pubs are more effective. Uh, therefore, a, a free exchange of views in which X will try and dominate Y and vice versa about football and disposition of the players and all of the rest of it. Uh, but it is actually for deepening friendship away from being unidimensional. We all have loads of unidimensional friends. Most of them are like on Greg's um, email there. They are his contacts. Why, are they his, why am I calling them contacts? Not because the machine does, which it does, uh, but because they contact him for something. I want you to write an article, review of a book, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's uh, not anything that's going to lead to emergence. It may be very convenient, it may be a very stable form of exchange, but that's as far as it goes. Now, I want it to go multidimensional, not unidimensional, not just being about exchange, multidimensional in uh, the sense that we could refer unidimensionally to our bridge friend or our traveling companion. And this is the only dimension <coughs> on which we meet them. And it's a very easy, it has very easy requirements that actually traveling companions are very, very replaceable, either commercially or personally. Uh, you can go on a group tour or you can find another friend to travel with you. Uh, it, in other words, it's rather fragile, a unidimensional friendship. Uh, when it becomes multidimensional, it becomes what I call thicker. And that thickness, uh, where you have layers mm. on top of one another, yeah. is what preserves the friendship and leads them to do things together. So collective action is, is crucial here, and this is, friendship is one of the things that prompts um, joint action. It's, it's not a necessary or a sufficient condition. Let's be very clear about that. Um, Margaret, can I ask you to take the other questions in the coffee break? We have yes. Only, we have eaten into it. Um, these were, were also fairly big questions. Um, and we will have, we will have uh, more cross-cutting discussions uh, later on. I think your fundamental presentation uh, will ring through coming sessions. So if you don't mind, uh, um, let's get the crowd into coffee and come back in 20 minutes uh, to the, under the chairpersonship of Armin Kramers. Um, uh, I would like us to 
give a warm hand of thanks to our four speakers. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.